On today's job, I built a block pilaster or a column that went from the floor to the top to hold the beam up. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, so here we go. Well, today, there's this steel beam that goes right across up into the underside of the block work. Now, what's going on here is let's take a better look at it. I think I said there's a crack here. And the beam only goes into that far. So actually, they put wooden shims in here. If you ever want to lift something up, put one wooden shim go one way, the other one the other way. But he's worried about this building caving in. So the owner decided what to do. We're going to put another pilaster right up against this wall, all the way up to underneath the beam. And they went down the block company and they got this little block it's about six by eight i'm just going to start on the bottom floor and go straight up and i don't know what i'm going to use to pin it yet i'll see but here we go here's one of the things that i want to find out if these blocks are hollow so we know we know these blocks are filled with cement so what i'm going to do is go get some steel and drill as I go and pin the block. But if they were hollow, I'd bust the block through and I would put some uh, something different there. So what I'm going to do is cut myself some rebar uh, about like that. So you make some pins like this to put in there. Well, for this job, I'm just going to use the pre-mixed stuff. Mix a little bit at a time. How you do with the pre-mix, it has the sand in it. Just add a little water, that's it. Mix it up. That's about it, the texture I want. So I'm going to lay my first block. I'm not going to lie to you. I just add a little bit rapid set, which is fast drying for the bottom because this is basically uh, the floor is a little bit off. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. I'm just going to lay my first block. I'm going to lay it enough where I can get some cement behind it, like this. I'm not worried about strings, I'm not worried about levels, none of that stuff. But I will level the first block, if I can see the bubbles. Not bad. First block I level. That's it. Ain't too worried about it. Like you said, I wanted to keep the back open enough where I can fill it right up. Just like that. No big deal. No big deal. This is a garage that they're fixing transmissions in. So they're not worried about how pretty it's going to look. our first block. Now we're going to put our second block on. It's like uh, these blocks are solid so we just want to get a decent bed. And they're going to go straight up and down. It's not a big deal here. We're going to put our second block in. That's about it. Let's just see if we're going good this way. It'll get a new level maybe. Pretty good. So we're going to keep it out here yeah, six and a half inches all the way up. And like I said, we're going to fill behind it all the way up. 
and then we're going to pin it. I'm going to show you that as we go. Get up to about the third one. We're not worried about our heights. When we get to the top, then we'll worry about it. We're continuing on. We're going to lay our third one. Do we have to hit a certain height? No. I ain't worried about that. I'm going to get it in. Keep it a little, cement a little stiff because it's like 35 degrees out there. Put this one in. Yep. Let you see. No big deal. I just want to keep them level that way. Close enough. Six and a half inches out. Six and a half inches out, good. Let's take a look at what's going on. I got some rebar and some steel pins. What I want to do is put them in this wall so that they hold. But I don't want to put them in straight like this. I want to put them in at an angle like this, like this or like this. Because when that wall pulls away, if it's pinned in, it's harder for that wall to pull away than if it is straight. So anytime we put it in, we're going to go at an angle, and right here looks pretty good. And we'll go this way over here a little bit. Now, we put our pins in, you see what it does? It's harder for that to pull in. Next time we do it, might do it this way. Anything that works. If you want, you can throw some water in there, kind of wash that out like that. Get yourself some cement. Push it in those holes like that. And then get your rebar. And shove it in like that. So we know we're good there. So now we're just going to cover these with cement. Just like that. Like I said, this is a this is a rented transmission shop. The only thing they want to do is make sure the beans don't cave in. And then we put our next block in. Perfect. If we have to cut in the block because of the metal, that's what we do. No big deal. So now all we're doing. Right now, it's just continuing on. I'm going to go straight up like this. About every second or third course, we're going to be putting our pins in. And then, when we get to the top, I'll show you what we do. So I'm getting to the top, little by little. I only got a little farther to go. I got two more to go. Maybe one and we'll see what happens. Now we're going to go up on the ladder here and see where we're at. And here's what's going on. This is the top of the block I'm laying. This is underneath the beam where I got a hit. So I'm going to lay another block. It's going to come up to here. I'm going to build this in and then put some wire and other stuff and build that in to make sure that that's blocked up. I'm doing this one hand, but I got some cement there, and I'm just going to fill this in with a brick. The other block's going to go against there, I'm going to fill this all in solid. I'm in on the top here, and I cut myself some door wall wire. We're going to go this way with it, because I want that to get in between there. And then I'm going to put my last block actually sticking out. Now we're on top there, and we got a little space. 
What I do is I'm going to put a piece of black paper in there before I tuck it, and I'm going to explain to you why. So I'm done with it, and I put the black paper underneath, and then I tuck it under the black paper. Because when this beam gets hot in the summer, it expands, and cold in the winter, it shrinks, and it's going to slide up and down on this masonry. So I'm going to explain you a little more about that. So I'm done with the whole thing from the bottom to the top. I'm all, it's all secure. Now the only last thing I'm doing is I'm going over the joints. And when I go over the joints, sometimes people see me going over the joints. They don't see me using a tool. And the reason I'm doing that is they're going to paint this. And when they paint it down the road, I don't want to see those lines sticking out like they do in every other building. The painter is not going to have to come and cock all these little holes and fill all this stuff in because I'm, I'm doing it with the sponge. So that's what I'm doing. That's the way I do it. That's the end. So I'm going to talk about putting steel beams in. Now back in the 1950s and the 60s and the 70s, 80s, up into the 90s, even today, they put the steel beams in on your cellar or to hold the roof up. Now you see me use black paper. One of the reasons I use black paper is it makes it slide a little better when it gets hot and cold and it keeps the moisture from the block to get in here to rust the steel. Now here's a big problem which I see a lot of people do is they cement the whole thing in solid. So they put the block in here and they cement everything solid. Then what happens is when it gets hot out, the metal expands and it cracks the block out. So what I do all the time is I get a piece of insulation, I put my block in, and then I cement it so it don't touch the steel. I also did a, another video on how I do block work over the top of steel lentils. It's how I do block work part 7 of 7, lentils and steel beams. And I talk more about it because when you start putting masonry into the steel, the steel and uh, the block, the block expands and contracts at a different rate than the steel. So you're always going to get a crack when you go around steel. That's why you see me in my videos. I always in some way keep it from getting the steel. Or you could use a little piece of styrofoam seal seal. As long as that cement ain't touching the steel, you're okay. I don't live in an earthquake area, but that's the way we do it around here. So that's it for this video. I hope you get something out of it. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. Until next time.